Maria Bakka, a market expert, and David Madden, market analyst, uh, Equity Capital. Welcome to both of you, and thank you so much for speaking with us on the show. Um, Mr. Bakka, let me begin with your overview of what happened today. Is it just simply the fears of the Russian-Ukraine crisis and the U.S. stepping in, those tensions escalating? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, the markets are factoring in a uh, higher uh, risk premium based on that, that uh, second order effects will come in in terms of uh, disruption of energy supplies to the European economy. What will be the impact on the European economies if the uh, conflict expands further or if uh, it uh, gets into uh, a, a direct confrontation of NATO versus the uh, 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 Russia? Uh, what happens then? Uh, even though uh, historically we have seen with the Georgia invasion in 2008, with the Crimean uh, annexation in 2014, there was not much of an impact on the European uh, GDP. And the markets also had very short-lived corrections, which they caught up fast. The Russian economy did uh, suffer, the Russian market suffered. And normally uh, the Russian stock market, which moves in line uh, with the oil price, has uh, 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 diverged uh, from the oil prices in the last uh, couple of months, ever since they started this buildup. Uh, so that is there, but uh, for the rest of the world to uh, uh, see these kind of corrections, I mean, the German markets were down 3.4% uh, early this morning. Uh, that kind of disruption is really second order effects and the worst case scenario being baked in by the markets, Tamanna. Um, David, how do you see this situation unfolding? Because uh, that same amount of panic uh, is not really being seen on Wall Street. Yes, the markets are down in the red, but they seem to be dominated more with concerns of what the Fed will do next. They do indeed, and it's a question of geography. If you're based over in the United States of America, even if a war does break out in Eastern Europe, from an economic and, and, and in turn a financial markets point of view, it's probably not going to have much of an impact on, on the operation of companies that are listed in the U.S. Where the, the major move we've seen here today is the German economy, is the, the German market, the DAX. The German economy is, is very dependent on gas, natural gas coming from Russia, in many, many instances via Ukraine. So a conflict in that part of the world could cause major uh, energy supply issues for Germany, the largest economy in the Eurozone, the largest economy in the EU, and but no, by, by no means exaggeration, the real engine room of mainland Europe as a whole. So it's no surprise we're seeing declines in excess of 2% on the German stock market, also the French and the Italian. Think about the geographic location of those countries and how they're all interconnected. That seems they're very much tied in what's going on on the edge of the European Union between Russia and Ukraine. Meanwhile, the, although we did see de declines earlier on the US index futures, you're right in saying that they're much more concerned about what the Federal Reserve are going to do. Traders are essentially pricing in a, at least several interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. Those who think the Fed are going to have a relatively mo moderate hawkish update this year, about three rate hikes. Some people are, are a bit more fearful of four or five rate hikes. And in that decision between a possibility of three rate hikes and five rate hikes, realistically speaking, this is the sort of band at which the, 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 the U.S. stock markets are, are, kind of, are wavering between. Which end are we, are we looking at? Earlier today, we heard James Bullard reiterate his view. He expects to see interest rates lifted by 1% between now and July. Mr. Bullard speaks for himself, not the entire Fed. But that really just kind of goes to show that at least some central bankers in the U.S. are at the more hawkish end of, of a pretty hawkish Fed to begin with. Yeah. You know, uh, Mr. Baga, I also want to understand the way markets have been responding. I'm talking about Indian markets. David talks about geography. Uh, but uh, by that extension of that theory, uh, I don't see why uh, Mumbai's Dalal Street has been so impacted by what is happening on the borders of Ukraine and Russia. But clearly, it's a bigger story than that. And that's what I want to ask you about, because these fears of escalation keep popping up uh, every few days. And we've been seeing this over the last three to four weeks now. So what really is the reading? Um, are the United States statements and those coming from President Biden, which seem to suggest that an invasion is imminent, are those not being taken 
as seriously because on the other side, you also have the Ukrainians saying don't cause panic. Is there a broader understanding that market experts have of the situation that we are not absolutely seeing? No, uh, you know, today we had FI selling more than 4,000 crores. So it was very heavy foreign institutional investors, uh, you know, uh, exiting uh, some counters uh, in the country. And uh, it was the heavyweights as well as the small caps were down 4%. So we had a pretty heavy uh, selling, Tamanna. And most of it, I think, would be uh, impact on us of Ukraine. Uh, we have uh, some uh, limited trade. We have 20,000 students uh, studying uh, in Ukraine, but the GDP impact is uh, not there. Uh, with Russia, uh, we have a very uh, strong relationship, and especially the defense relationship is very strong. Uh, but uh, again, uh, the markets are not really fessed about that. It was more the oil price and uh, what the Fed will do. I think those were the two big factors. Uh, Ukraine became an issue today uh, in a geopolitical sense that global markets opened down and uh, Indian markets also got caught in that. Uh, but overall for India, the impact of Ukraine either ways is uh, very limited, uh, very superficial and very transient. It won't uh, really last much uh, for us. And we are not dependent, uh, some sunflower oil and uh, stuff like that. Uh, we are self-sufficient in uh, grains and uh, wheat. Uh, so not much of an impact. It was more the oil price rising and what happened uh, at Wall Street on Friday. I think that was the carry forward uh, into India and the concentrated selling uh, by foreign institutional investors, which has been there uh, since October. We have been seeing this selling. Yeah. Uh, so by that uh, extension of that logic, Mr. Baga, how long do you see this pain lasting? Because the point you made about FII selling has been going on for some time now. They've been uh, dumping uh, investments out of India. So a mixture of Ukraine, Fed fears, all of that has been looming. But do you see this pain going on for some time as far as Indian markets are concerned? I think markets have front-loaded all the risk, uh, you know, even the geopolitical risk as mm -hmm. well as the uh, Fed risk, uh, you know, Goldman talks about seven uh, rate hikes. Uh, the Fed fund rates is uh, showing 1.75 by the end of uh, this year, uh, which again points to uh, seven uh, rate hikes or maybe uh, uh, less of uh, with one of 0.5. So markets are over uh, dramatizing uh, the rate hike. Uh, Mary Daly, uh, the San Francisco Fed president, she has been a very prescient uh, in September, in November, and in December. She called the Fed pivots uh, when they moved from transient to more uh, lasting, uh, to uh, taking away accommodation, to accelerating taking away uh, the accommodation. She uh, called it very well. And yesterday she was on the CBC show uh, in the US in the evening, and she talked about stabilization, calibrated uh, actions, and making sure that financial stability is maintained as the accommodation is taken off. And she said, we have signaled that we are going to tighten. We will raise rates in March. After that, we will be very data driven. I think she was very moderate, but Bullard came in today, uh, this morning, and uh, he gave the interview. And you know, guess what? Uh, so many of these Fed presidents have been caught in the past uh, dealing in the markets themselves. So it becomes very frustrating uh, to really see this happen. And then in the end, they say, of course, Powell will decide. Then why are you coming and shooting your mouth off? He did that on Friday. Uh, then two other uh, presidents spoke after him, trying to uh, make sure the markets understood that it's yeah. more calibrated. And again, this morning, he was on business channels, uh, shooting his mouth off on the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you read his interviews, in the end, it will say, oh, oh I'll leave it to Jim Powell to decide and uh, let's see. But uh, yeah. the headlines in the media are that and the Dow went down 300 points immediately. Uh, I'm sure uh, investors are also looking at what is being said by all of these different voices and calibrating what will happen. The Dow Jones um, down 300 points right now, in fact, 326 points uh, to be precise. Uh, David Madden, how long do you see the pain 
continuing as far as global markets are concerned, as far as US markets are concerned, because both of these factors will continue in tandem over the next few weeks, whether it is uncertainty over what the Federal Reserve will do, or these fears of an escalation of tensions between Ukraine and Russia? I think the uncertainty in the financial markets is going to carry on until at least early to mid to mid March, and really kind of anchoring around when we have the update from the Federal Reserve. Now, it's looking quite likely that we are going to see some sort of an interest rate hike from the U.S. Central Bank next month. But the question is, um, as uh, the question is, how large will the how, how large will the rate be? Rate hike be? Will it be a quarter of one percent? Will it be half of one percent? Will it be a quarter of one percent? But a quite a hawkish update to suggest we're going to be raising rates um, at, at the next meeting and then and the next meeting as well. I think that's really going to be the um, the, 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 the 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 determining factor of the up the the trajectory of, of financial markets for the next two weeks, because. For the time being, we're all expecting several rate hikes this year at the top end, up to up to to seven rate hikes this year, which I think would be quite aggressive, considering we've come from almost zero rates for quite a prolonged period. Um, but I think somewhere in the region, more like four to five interest rates is somewhere somewhere rational. And I think if the Federal Reserve were to play it a little safe, which I think they should, do one rate hike, a quarter of a percentage rise, and then give off the impression to say. We'll see how it goes in a few months' time. We don't want to go from going one extreme to the other, almost zero rates for the guts of two years to hiking by a quarter every single chance that you get. I think that in itself because it could automatically gear down the recovery in the US economy because although inflation is at 7.5% at a 40-year high, the unemployment rate at the most recent non-farm payroll report actually ticked up. And you don't be put, what we be putting too much emphasis and focus on the employment of the inflation reading while ignoring the ever so slight increase in the jobless rate.